Hello everybody and welcome back to Connor here with a little segment I think we're, you know, I feel like I should do after yesterday. I'm going to call it the final word or the debrief. I'm still not sure on what I should call it yet. But listen, it was a dramatic day and I just wanted to go over it a little bit more, you know. Thank you for the support on the video, obviously. It has derived a lot of different opinions um, and I just kind of wanted to come on here and, you know, talk about the game and how I feel, obviously, a little bit calmed down. Listen, it, that's what you get when you sign up for this channel. When we come on, it's raw. We control what we say. We we don't swear. We come on and, and we try to give a bit of a balanced view, but it's in the moment, you know, it's straight after the game and that's what you're going to expect and that is just what we deliver on, on, on a sort of weekly basis. So... If you enjoyed it, thank you so much for the support. If you didn't, you know, that's just opinions. That's football. Thank you for your comments and all your, you know, I got a bit of abuse yesterday. <laughs> but, you know, it's part and parcel of it. I've got thick skin. It's just how it goes. But the actual game, you know, looking back on it, we're still top of the league. I mean, that for me just says where we could be, if you get what I mean. I mean, Swansea, Derby, Forest now, I think we should have picked up three points in every single game. I had a lot of people coming on the channel saying, you're not as good as you think you are uh, regarding Leeds. I, I'm not sure I agree with that. I think I, I even think last season when we were at this, at this stage, we weren't dominating teams like we are. I mean, uh, like we are right now. I mean, that West Brom game last year was probably the best Leeds United I've seen. But performance-wise, that first 60 minutes yesterday, barring goals, which we know is an issue, that is the best performance I've seen under Marcelo Bielsa in my time as a Leeds United fan. They couldn't get a touch of the ball. I mean, I was listening to a bit of Derby commentary as well afterwards to try and get a little bit of, you know, balance. And they were turning around and saying for the first 60, 65 minutes, it was just sort of watch and appreciate with Leeds. that We couldn't touch the ball. And I think it was a case of Leeds sort of diving off a little bit and, and not keeping up with that sort of level that we normally keep up with. We sort of sat back and, and you know, obviously after the penalty, it all sort of didn't go wrong. But, you know, we sort of allowed Derby into the game a little bit. But <clears throat> I think on, on the whole, I was listening to Koku's comments after the game and he said it was a plan. It was a plan for that to happen. In terms of letting Leeds have the ball and, 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 and counter-attacking Leeds, I can agree with Koku there. I, you know, I think that's obviously going to be a game plan for any team to come to Ellen Road and, and you know, have, have less of the ball and counter-attack Leeds. But I really didn't feel Derby did any of that. It didn't look like there was any sort of plan. They were trying to play out from the back. It was sort of lacklustre from the back. We were capitalising. And it was all about us not taking chances again. And it's all that familiar pattern again of what, you know, what I was trying to say yesterday. is It is that similar thing once again of us not being able to take our chances. And, and is there a bit of a, a confidence ebb in the squad, which sounds mental when you're top of the league. But that's the sort of standards we hit now. You know, we're used to this free-flowing, excellent football. We can't win every game 3-4-0, but there were some people who predicted it was going to be an absolute battering for Derby yesterday. And, and I really thought when we started that game, like we did, it was going to be a long, long sort of first 45 for Derby. But it didn't pan out that way. You know, Jamie Shackleton missed from about three or four yards out. Hernandez missed a really good chance. Obviously, Jack Harrison had a, a shot well saved by Roos. And, and, and it was just attack after attack after attack. They couldn't get out their own half. And it was a wonderful performance at the start. But, you know, I mean, you even talk about the goals scored. I mean, we still didn't even score that. I mean, it was an own goal. It was, you know, Dallas hit it. It was a good save from the keeper. And it was actually really unlucky. You know, the balancing act is Derby were, were extremely lucky to still be in the game. But... There's definitely an issue with our finishing. There's definitely an issue with our finishing. And, and a lot of people were even saying, you know, when Forshaw was in the squad, what about Forshaw? Well, even when Forshaw was in the squad, you know, it was the guilt edge chance against Wigan where he missed from about four yards out. Obviously, he missed a couple against Bristol City. I think it, it just runs throughout the squad. I don't know what it is in front of goal. But, you know, it is... <clears throat> well, there was so many fine margins yesterday which you look back on and you appreciate, really. I mean... They were massively lucky. I mean, you look at the penalty. The penalty sends the keeper the complete wrong way. A lot of people turn around and saying, you know, it was a bad penalty. I don't think it was a bad penalty. I think, you know, he gave the keeper the eye, sent him the wrong way. And it was it was unlucky. It was it was it was just wide. I mean, he put it right in the corner, didn't he? But yeah, I guess I guess you've got a hamper on at click for that and, and, and you know Bamford did wonderfully well to get into that um, area. I'm gonna talk about Bamford in a little while. But yeah, and, and obviously Bamford once again with that that miss, which was a uh, a width of, of of a shoelace onto the post, really. And 
Leeds just completely dominated proceedings, you know, until the last sort of 15 minutes when it sort of, sort of opened up a bit where I don't really understand what happened. But Bamford, I don't know what, how it came across yesterday, but I did actually say in multiple times in the video that I thought Bamford played really, really well. The problem is it's just his finishing touch, I think. I think I, I've said it in multiple videos that he is a one in four, one in five <clears throat> striker. And I think that's always going to sort of hamper Leeds, you know, especially in the final third. Do you go out in January and and buy a striker, you know, a 20-30 goal a season striker? You know, obviously, we've got Eddie there, but is it fair to put all that pressure on a young 19-year-old lad? Is 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 that acceptable, really? I'm, I'm not 100% sure it is, but we were good yesterday. We were really good. It's just the, the finishing touch. And a lot of people, you know, we're talking about, you know, well, would, would the lads have made a difference if they were on any earlier? You know, the likes of, you know... Uh, Costa and Inketi, I think they would have done definitely, especially with the amount of chances we were conjuring up in that in that first half. But I thought Costa, Costa when he came on, yeah, we didn't make that much of a difference. But the reason was, and what I was trying to reiterate yesterday, is the fact that the defensive line and the midfield line had dropped. We weren't keeping the ball enough. And when Eddie and Costa came on, it was sort of two wasted substitutions because every time we got it at the back, we sort of started to lose the 50-50s coherently in the last 15 we weren't winning any of the 50 50s and every time we get the ball we just lump it and it goes straight to Keogh straight to Clark so you can't really blame Costa or Nketiah when they came on Nketiah barely got a touch because we weren't playing that fluid football we normally play we retracted you could see the confidence levels sort of diminish and that's what worried me massively the confidence levels like we look terrified when it's 1-0 and 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 just defending that league at, at lead at home especially I don't know what's happened, you know, was it four conceded at home now, scored 10 away from home, away from home, we're absolutely expert, but I don't know what's happened, what's crept into the performances at home, it, it definitely is a confidence issue, and it is worrying because you build promotion campaigns on home forms, you win all your home games and you pick up points away, there's a blueprint there for every team that's done it in, in, in every ember of every promotion fight, that's happened all the time, you know, Burnley, Wolves, Brighton, Newcastle, it's always been you're comfortable at home and you get your points away and you get your three, you get your one away from home. And I just thought it was it was just typical of Leeds yesterday. And I think the frustration was, you know, yesterday was a match review. I feel it was a very sort of balanced match review. Yeah, I was emotional, but it was a match review. Do you know what I mean? I'm not talking about, I'm not trying to diminish any player there. I'm not trying to slight on any player because I wasn't. I didn't bash anyone really. I, I don't personally think Patrick Bamford is good enough. I also and I will stand by that. I don't think as a lead out and out striker he's going to get you. You know, people still quoting he's going to get twenty five goals this season. I just cannot see that personally. I think yeah, you know, he could have been on an absolute tally by now, and I just think he's not confident in those situations. He's not clinical in those situations, and I think it is time to either start two up front or maybe just give Eddie a chance. I do really like Bamford's play though. I thought he was excellent yesterday. The hold up play, the battle against Keogh and Clark. You know, he won the penalty. It was a brilliant bit of skill for the penalty I just feel sometimes it is is his composure in front of goal and sort of how long does that last but you know Bamford's not the main problem for me he's not the main problem the main problem and you've got to say it on this channel because that's what we do we come out and we review the game it is Harrison unfortunately I know he's a young lad but just the amount of you know if you watch the game back I've watched the game back twice actually and if you watch how many times he gets the ball out wide and there was an actual point where Bamford was actually clean through in the first half. They didn't show it on the highlights. He was clean through and Harrison just got it stuck in between his feet. And it was it literally a four-yard pass. Bamford was in in for goal. He was the right side of Keogh. Didn't play it in. Misplaced pass. And it's that quality player that we do have on the bench that needs to start every game. Because Helder Costa has already started this season like Helder Costa 2016-17 for Wolves. The only difference is he's not starting. I think if Helder Costa starts against these teams, we'd bury them and we'd put them away. And Kalioski and, and Costa worked really well together. They're both attacking threats and they both get back as well. I thought Costa was doing that really well yesterday when he came on. But I think that is the key change and it, and it worries me how long he's going to stick with that. Because I said in my on Twitter and my video, I said if he starts Harrison, it's going to be a tight first half. Obviously, possession-wise, it's never going to be tight because we're always going to dominate teams. Forest, Swansea, Derby. Um, you know, amongst the teams that have not got full uh, full points over, but 
we're never going to put them away. So that's what I mean with a tight game. It's always going to be a tight result. And it was. It was only 1-0. It was in the balance. And I was constantly saying throughout the game, it's only one. It's only one. We need another goal to keep it secure, you know. And, and we've seen Derby in the past against us come back. Do you know what I mean? And they've always got that in them. They've always got embers of quality in them as well. They've got the good side, Derby, on the quality of play, you know, on the quality of uh, player, sorry. So I was I was I was taken aback by that. I was taken aback by the fact we we just sort of retreated. I mentioned it numerous times in the, in my previous video. We retreated, we slacked, and and the intensity stopped. And that's what frustrated me more than anything because we've got it in our locker to just absolutely blow teams away. And um, yeah, all right, we don't get one, we don't get another, but we keep going. You go until that ninetieth minute, and we've got the fitness. But I said that yesterday. I said that it worried me about the fitness a little bit, to be quite frank, because we dropped off massively after the seventy seventy fifth minute. We dropped off and, you know, a lot of people are attributing that to confidence. But for me, it looked like fitness. Click looked really leggy. Bamford looked really leggy all of a sudden. You know, obviously took Harrison off, but Harrison looked leggy. Pablo did as well. And not, uh, not an amazing game for Pablo again yesterday. Special kudos, shout out once again to Stuart Dallas, who was man of the match again. He's steadily becoming one of my favourite players. But there was a balance on that right-hand side. I did think Pablo had a little bit of a better game than he's had previously. You know, he had a lovely run down and Shackleton should have scored. But, you know, we get Forshaw back in that team. I think it gives the midfield a lot more balance. And I think it is a massive miss when you have Forshaw out that side. Shackleton's good going forward, but I think Forshaw gives you that ember of control in the midfield. Steadiness, calm, composure, confidence on the ball in tight situations. And I think that's what we missed yesterday. But it was a really good performance. One of the best performances I've seen under Marcelo Biel. So it was just unfortunate that once again... We couldn't put our chances away. And you can understand the frustration for me amongst lots of fans, including myself and others. But yeah, Derby, kudos. You fought out till the end. You held and held and held and held. You've got to give respect to Derby there. You know, we did, they didn't concede. The second they were on the back foot for the majority of the game, they were being dominated. And yeah, I don't know. It was it was fair play to Derby, but I, I'm, I'm still not on board with this Koku game plan. I think... That first half, they were just massively lucky. Yeah, and obviously the penalty miss when we hit the post, it's that's that's looking football, do you know what I mean? And it just worries me the confidence how suddenly, you know, after that click penalty miss, we, we retreated and we weren't able to do the fundamentals, the basic things well, keep hold of the ball, the Marcelo Bielsa way. But yeah, we're going to Charlton next week's an away game. I'm still full of confidence. I still think we're the best team in the division by far. You look at yesterday, I mean, how we're still top, I don't know, but it's Teams are underperforming still. You, know, you look at Swansea, Cardiff, and, you know West Brom and Huddersfield today. I was looking at those teams in particular, and they're just not. They're, they're, I still think we're on a, a different level. Do you know, you look how well Forest are doing at this moment in time. We dominated Forest. Do you know what I mean? Derby are going to probably be up there at the end of the season. They'll probably turn it around at some point. Rooney's going to make an impact, but we dominated them yesterday. Brentford dominated them. Do you know what I mean? It's we're doing so well against these teams and there is that critical factor and that's the difference from last season. It's just whether the manager's going to start playing them now. You know, that's the difference. We have the players on the bench. We have the quality on the bench. Is the manager going to start playing them? And a lot of people are forgetting about the likes of Tyler Roberts. I think he should have come on yesterday. I think he'd have stretched the game. Him on for Shackleton. We keep that offensive play up. We hurt Derby again. They wouldn't have been able to deal with Tyler Roberts yesterday. And we've got Roberts, we've got Ailing now, we've got Costa, we've got Inketia on the bench. It's looking very, very strong for Leeds. And I think, you know, next week, Charlton without a Lyle Taylor, Charlton with a bad result yesterday as well. I think there's going to be a big bounce back ability. But I really am starting to worry about our home form. And the, there is a bigger blueprint developing of how to play against Leeds for me. You keep it down to 1 0. And the team is always in it, you know. You, for example, Sheffield United, I hate to mention it, but Sheffield United, you know, they were always 1-0 up last season, but they were able to grind it out. They had just that defensive solidarity and confidence at the fact that they were able to see games out to nil. Leeds, I don't think we have that, and I still think that's a hangover from last season. We've got to get a little bit more confidence in the fact we are the best team for me in the division. A lot of other fans are saying that. A lot of other fans who aren't salty about Leeds will come out and say that we are the best team in the division but you know I mean we should be sitting pretty on about 25 points at this moment in time we really should and and I still think we're just it's 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 just a tactical decision away from us being there and it is putting Costa in from the start and giving him a run of games and seeing if we're able to do that and I think we genuinely will be and I think we could excuse me start blowing teams away but let me know what you guys think anyway 
in the comments section below. Do you agree with what I'm saying? I hope you know you stick your opinions on there. I love. I've read every single comment yesterday. I think the video is on about 380 comments, which is just mental. Thank you so much for your support as well. We've had a lot of messages. 10,000 subscribers, guys. We're going to look to do something in particular. We're still working on the podcast, still getting that um, up and running. That is going to happen at some point. It's just getting everybody together. As you, you know, you can respect. We all live at completely different ends of the country, so it is a little bit more difficult than um, you know. For example, if we all lived in Leeds or, or York or around the in the surrounding area. So I hope you're all doing well. Anyway, I hope you know you've all simmered a little bit, like I have. You know. Um, and thank you so much for your support. 10,000 subscribers for the channel is absolutely monumental. And thank you so much for all your positive tweets to me, all your positive Instagram messages to me. Uh, it's been wonderful. I've, I've loved reading them all. Even last night, they're all so positive. So thank you so much. Joe, Oscar, Tash, well done for everything you've done on the channel. And we're going to keep striving and keep improving and hopefully bringing you guys the content that you want to see. Hope you have a great Sunday. See you later on.